As we move on from the Sumerians, we move into the Akkadians. The Akkadians are a Semitic group that came in and conquered Mesopotamia. Semitic meaning that their language is this sort of mix, proto version of Hebrew and Arabic. And they're going to take over and conquer much of what is Mesopotamia. They expanded upon much of what the Sumerians had accomplished, including writing. The big shift, though, is instead of city-states, we see a shift towards loyalty to the monarch rather than loyalty to a city-state. This is the development of kingdoms and eventually empires. And that question of who you identify with becomes particularly important. Do you identify with your town, your state, your country in modern times, or in this case, with your city-state, your individual village in the city-state, or the overarching ruler, the king, which would create a kingdom, or the emperor in the case of an empire. And the piece we're looking at is the head of an Akkadian ruler. This is a beautiful piece, a blend of naturalism and abstraction. And it's a sort of piece that would have been quite expensive at the time. In this case, it is created out of copper. And it is, in fact, hollow cast, although it's hard to see. You can see through the eyes. You can see that it's hollow. And that hollow cast is going to be necessary because at the end of the day, it means that I can use less materials and create something that's going to be lighter and potentially more useful. I can put it on more things. The use of material, of course, speaks to cost, and cost is always a factor. Even with the wealthiest individuals, they want to have something that is going to be beneficial to them. The head may be a first attempt at portraiture, an early attempt at portraiture. It is, in fact, life-size, and of course, there is a certain amount of stylization. The beard, for example, is stylized. The hair is stylized. Why? Because trying to sculpt beards and hair is incredibly difficult. We'll see that problem with the Greeks and the Romans. And they have a couple of thousand years on the Akkadians in this case. But it still reads as a portrait, probably generalized in many ways. For example, the eyebrows or the overall shape of the face may be somewhat generalized or even idealized, especially if he's some kind of god king. The eyes would have been inlaid with precious stones, possibly with an early form of glass, uh, shell, any number of other things, and they're removed in part possibly because of value, but probably by a later ruler who had conquered these people, found this, and remove the eyes as really a symbol that these people had been conquered and that this ruler has no more power. What it does do, though, is give us a view of what they saw as sort of an idealized form or an idealized king, or at least the visual image of that king. It gives us a sense of who this person might have been in terms of their appearance, if nothing else. And after all, that is the basis of a portrait, capturing the appearance more than the character, although that will come with time.